Are you tired of searching for files with slow search results? With UltraSearch, you can simply type the file name and your files will appear instantly, and then you could filter the results as needed. And in case you've forgotten the file name, just type out the content you remember and UltraSearch will find the files for you. Then you'll have several actions you could take on the search results. You'll learn how to do this and more in this video. Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about a nice program you could use to search for files and folders on your computer, as well as do a lot of other things at the same time. So if you're used to using File Explorer to do your searches, then you probably know how slow it could be, especially if you're searching in a folder that has a lot of uh, other files and folders in it. So what we're going to be using today is called Ultra Search. So there are two versions of it. There is a free version and a professional version. So if you go to their website, you could look at the differences here. So $35 for the uh, professional version, but definitely worth it if you're going to be using it a lot. And you do get a 30 day trial of the professional version when you try the free version. So here's the differences here. So even the free version has some pretty good features up here. And then here are the things that you cannot do with the free version. So if you're using SharePoint, so this is a great tool to search your SharePoint if you have the professional version. And you can do a lot of filtering, moving, bulk renaming. This is a great feature as well, which we're going to demonstrate here in a little bit here. Okay, so we're going to open up the program. And then we'll just go through the interface here real quick. Okay, so we have some familiar tabs up here. File menu. If you want to add a directory just to search that directory, you could do that. And here's where you could find your SharePoint information and some other search options here. Refresh the search results, have a new instance of the program, export your search to various file types, print your list, and some help. All right, then we have the Home tab where you could set it to include files and folders or both. So if we just want to search for files, you would have this selected. But if you want to do folders too, you could do this as well. And then we have some filter options, which we'll be showing you in a minute. And then we have some date filters as well, and also size filters. Then here you could save and load your search to reuse again later. And then once you have your search results, you could select them and take various actions on them, which we'll be showing you as well. And then if you want to change your views, from automatic, terabytes, gigabytes, megabytes, and so on. Change your date and time format, your font size, what columns you want to be shown, change your view, sorting, if you want to have uh, check boxes like you can in File Explorer, and then if you want to have the preview pane visible or not. Then we have some options here for the application. You want to have it always start as administrator. Might come in handy if you're going to search some folders that you might not have access to otherwise. Launch at Windows, some Explorer integration, uh, minimize the system tray or minimize on double click. Then if you want to have the good old dark theme, you could do that as well. Language options, miscellaneous options here. Exclusions for your filters. File groups, which we'll be showing you in a minute as well. Content search, you want to have a portable installation on a removable device, you could do that. And then if you want to restart it as administrator, you could do that. Then of course we have the help menu here. So here's where you'd enter your license key once you buy it, and then you could check for updates as well. Okay, so we're gonna start by adding a directory here. So we'll pick the C drive. And we'll do the E drive as well. And then suggested pass is there by default, but you don't have to check that if you don't want. All right, we'll type in a file name, let's do Hawaii. Okay, so you can see we have many pictures here couple other files, uh, Word document, PDF, and a lot of images. So if I click on one here, you see I have a preview over there. Same with a PDF, for example. And this computer doesn't have Word on it, so it's not going to show me a preview. But it will show you previews for other types of files, like PowerPoint, for example. Okay, so once you have your Files loaded here from your search results. You could right click on them. You have some options. Open the file location. Copy the path of the file. Copy the name. Copy the folder path. If you click on export, that'll export everything in your search results to a text file. 
Let's call this test here on the desktop. All right, let's open it up here. So now you can see it has the information for your search results in the text file in case you want to use that for something else. You could copy your list, print your list, edit your picture in whatever photo editor you happen to have installed on your computer. You could rotate it, send to another device. A lot of the same options you'll have in File Explorer. You know, cut, copy, print, add to favorites, delete, and so on. Okay, if we click on Include Folders, now you can see we have some folders that have the name Hawaii in them as well. And then if we go up to Filter, let's say we want only images. But that'll still show the folders though, just keep that in mind. So let's turn that off. Now we just have images. And just PDF files, we could do that as well. And then if you go to configure file groups, this is what we saw earlier. If you want to add your own filters, you could do that. So here are the defaults, which you could remove, and then you could add these file extensions. So if you want to filter just on specific file extensions, you could do that. Then if you come up to date accessed, you could set the date here for your results. Same for date created and date modified. And then for your size here, you could set a minimum size and a maximum size. So let's say a maximum size of one megabyte. Okay, so none of these files here are over one megabyte because of this filter here. And then you could save and load your search results from here. All right, so let's go over to operations. So it's grayed out to you select something. Then we have some of the same options that you saw with the right click menu. All right, so you might find that this bulk rename feature comes in handy. So let's highlight a few files here. Click on bulk rename. All right, so it shows you a preview here. So we have replace, insert, serialize, delete, uppercase, lowercase. And you could apply it to file name, folder names, extensions only, or the full name. So for example, let's try out replace. So let's say instead of Hawaii, we wanted Maui because we had the name wrong. And you can see the preview here. And if you click on execute, watch the files over here on the left. It says they're renamed. And if you change your mind, you could undo it before you close it. Okay, you could even insert. So let's say we want to insert 2024. Let's put a dash in front of that. And let's put it suffix, so it'll be at the end. Execute. So now you can see we have 2024 at the end there. Serialize if you want to do that. Now you can see we have numbers in front of them. Then delete and then change to uppercase or lowercase. So that's a really nice feature being able to do that and actually see the preview and actually undo it if you change your mind. All right, then we have some file operations here. So once you highlight your files, you can delete them, move them, copy them, zip them up, pass them to an executable as a parameter. And then here's the destination. So it adds its own by default, but you could browse to another one if you want. Then you have some options for what to do with existing files and shortcuts and emptying directories and so on. And then of course here you have the select all, select none, invert selection, and then export everything to a text file, CSV file, and so on. Okay, and like I said before, you have some options to change the date format if you want to do that. Change the font size. What columns. Your views. Sorting from here. Adding checkboxes. And then we went through all the options. Okay, so that's the main search here. So let's get rid of the search here. Okay, and of course you could search for other things, you know, with using wildcards. So let's say we wanted to do PowerPoint presentations. So PPTX. But you could see since I didn't do the uh, asterisk dot PPTX that I found other things with PPTX. So you could do it both ways. So let's narrow it down here. There you go. Now we just have PowerPoint. And you can see we do get a preview for the PowerPoint. 
And by the way, there are some command line searches you could do as well if you're into that, if you wanted to check out the help to get for more information about that. Okay, let's clear this out. Another trick you could do too So if we type in the file name greater than one megabyte, you could see it finds files greater than one megabyte. So it's just an alternate way to do this instead of going to the minimum and maximum size here, you could actually use it in your searches. So there are other types of searches you could use using this method too. So if you look in the help file, you'll find out some other ways to do this type of thing. All right, let's clear this out. Okay, now let's check out this section here for searching for file content. So if I open this PDF here, Let's find something inside that we could search for. Let's just try this term here. Devices on a private network, let's paste it in. So you can see the file is Windows network types and it found the file and then it found the Word document version as well. So it could actually search within your files to find words and phrases and then give you the search results here as well. Just keep in mind when doing this, it's going to be doing a lot of searching. So you might wanna narrow down your locations, otherwise it's going to be searching your whole computer trying to search within files and find the information. So it could take quite a bit of time. So I'm just going to cancel this out here since we found our results. So that's how that works. So as you can see, it's a very powerful tool. So if you're always searching for files and folders, I would definitely give this a shot. And especially since you get the professional version features for 30 days, that way you could really test it. And then if you really like it, just go to the website, uh, buy the software, put in the key, and then you'll have the professional version to use as needed. All right, so I will put a link in the description for Ultra Search Professional. Then you could try it for yourself. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.